Welcome in, beautiful travelers. My name is Maria at Indigo Earth. I'm here to do a reading for our Taurus, our Earth sign, Taurus. Taurus, you are ruled by the planet Venus, which is the planet of love and of beauty. Your dual nature is to be dependable, yet you can be very materialistic and security orientated. Your drive is for luxury and your mantra is I have. Welcome in cross watchers. You may be connected to or dealing with the Taurus in a relationship with the Taurus. So you are here to see what's going on with your person. So some of this reading could be for you as well. Use your discernment as the reading goes along. Feel free to swap around the characters whenever you need to. And our energies are working together. You and I quantum enigma to bring you a message for the highest atonement of soul growth and soul evolution for you as well as for humanity and all living deities on the planet welcome in the new earth right so take what resonates leave the rest behind if it doesn't fit don't try to make it fit i have another card in here from another deck that wants to play <laughs> And time is fluid, so anytime you come across this message and you were drawn into it, that was the time that was needed for you to hear it. So stay open to that fluidity. Try to get off the linear timeline, 3D density. And if you like the content being shared, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow so that other Turinians may get a message that might be needed for them as well. Much appreciated. Glad to have you here. All right, let's get a theme going for you, Taurus. A theme for Taurus, please. I did see the King of Cups coming out. Too many. There we go. So we have the Prince of Wands or the Page of, or Knight of Wands, excuse me. And we have the Four of Wands. So this is something about maybe moving forward in commitment or a desire to move forward in commitment. Um, maybe wanting to move forward in a commitment, something that's stable, something that's a constant. So let's see where we go with you today, Taurus. Sun, moon, Venus, and rising. And if this reading doesn't resonate, I always check your moon sign. You might be more in your lunar, lunar cycle this month than you are in your sun cycle. Messages for Taurus, please. Sun, moon, Venus, and rising. Messages for the highest atonement of soul growth, soul evolution, and from the oversoul. Right, thank you. All right, here we go. Your overall energy, Ten of Swords, exhaustion, fed up, done, <laughs> had enough, got the t-shirt, don't need another one. This could be feeling hopeless. This could be manic depression. This could be mental health issues. <clears throat> this could be addictions. This has a number of different... Um, different types of toxic toxicity attached to it but it could just be also just you've gone through the mill you've gone through the mill over and over again the lesson keeps coming up and finally you're surrendering to the lesson so we'll see where we go with that your situation the star healing this is also about innate intentions. This is about balancing the emotions. Um, you're kind of in between two worlds, the 3D and the 5D. So balancing the emotions with in the 3D 
in this kind of patriarchal system that we're in with the 5D, which is more of the emotions and the feelings. Your opportunity, change the universe. Learning the lesson, moving on. Evolving. Getting to the next level. What the universe is working on with you is your fears. Your fears, your anxieties, the monkey mind, those things that keep you up at night, the constant repetition, the drilling, the monkey on your backs. Uh, energies that surround you that you might not be aware of. Eight of Cups. Moving on. This is a spiritual journey card. It's also moving towards emotional health and emotional fulfillment. Innate fulfillment. Soul fulfillment. Energies that are coming in in the near future. King of Swords. King of Swords is all about truth. It's all about justice. All about clarity. It's all about awareness. Um... King of Swords does not have a whole lot of emotion. Just kind of has detached. Removed the emotion from it, but is very just in how he sees things. However, he is an observer. And he will, and that's not gender specific again. Those are just the male energies. where they're, Male energies where it's action orientated, focused orientated, goal orientated. The energies are to, um, the goal is to find out the truth. Energies that are fading away, ten of pentacles, something to do with the foundation, something to do with like your, the platform from which you jump from in your perceptions and your projections and as you live it out in this life. So the platform where you kind of center yourself on how you decipher to move through life. That's fading away. Um, oh, how are you showing up in this situation? Three of Cups. Could be playful, joyful. Could be looking for companionship. Could be searching for friends. What's right in front of you that you need to contend with? Queen of Wands. That is um, that is an energy that's very passionate, very driven, very um, colorful. Uh, the Queen of Wands is very full of drama, very egotistic, very self-centered. Um, is a visionary, but won't take anybody along in the vision unless there's something in it for her. Your hopes and fears, the high priestess, inner knowing, intuition, could be keeping secrets, and your outcome is the seven of cups. So this is about either expanding your awareness or having to make choices or your projections onto things or um, you're compartmentalizing life. And we got it with the Knight of Pentacles. That's a very slow, steady, sturdy, moving energy. So let's see where we go with you, Taurus. What is the star? This is your situation. The star, healing, embodiment. This could be about um, the energies that you're manifesting into your realm. But this is about healing. This is about um, praying. This is about asking for guidance. This is about balancing your emotions with your actions. What is this star for Taurus, please? Is anybody going to jump out? Go one more time through. So we have the Two of Swords. 
That's an unwillingness. We have the Eight of Wands. That's about communication. And we have the Five of Wands. So the Two of Swords is like blocking yourself off, unwilling to learn, shutting the ears, you know, not taking counsel, not listening to anybody. Um, the Eight of Wands is about communication. And the Five of Wands is about conflict, confrontation. So this healing card is talking about being able to heal your inability to communicate because of conflict or confrontation. Working with those energies of shutting down, shutting off. Let's see what the world is. This is your opportunity and it's over. You got two tens here. That's three, sorry. Um, a 10 is mastering a karmic lesson. And then the world is endings and new beginnings. So let's see what the world is for you. This is your opportunity. We got the moon, something being hidden, something not being told. Could be about feelings and emotions again. Whoa. We got the ace of wands. And we got the six of wands. So this change... This change might be something that's kind of like deep inside your solar plexus. There's a desire or a wanting to move forward or to go forth or to start over. Um, the Ace of Wands is kind of the catalyst that gets things going. It, it's kind of the driving force. Um, and it has to do with wanting something better. Wanting more. Wanting something different. Wanting change. And it could just be that, you know, all resources are exhausted and there's nowhere else to go but change. There's nowhere else, there's nothing else to do. Let's see what the Nine of Swords is. This is what the universe is trying to help you with. Nine of Wands, fear, anxiety, depression, monkey mind. One more time through, please. Anybody going to pop out? Four cups. Stuck. Glasses half empty. Refusal. Stubbornness. Not willing to move. And we have the Knight of Cups. Something to do in love. And we have the Page of Cups. Softening of the heart. So there's some kind of fear here. There's some kind of fear that has to do with kind of like softening of the heart, maybe moving forth in some kind of like expression of, um, of compassion or maybe just even giving an offer of compassion and empathy. Um, but so far in this reading, You've got a desire to want to be in a constant, in a, a commitment. But there's fear and there's a lot of like refusal. Two of Swords. Ten of Swords. Four of Cups. That is driven by fear. Driven by fear and it has to do with something in the heart. And the five of wands. That's another. That's another uh, 
conflict, confrontation card. Five of Wands is like competition, confrontation, jealousy, anger, rage. Um, it's just all that lower, low energy stuff. But let's see what the King of Swords is. Trying to get to the truth of the matter here. What is this King of Swords, please? Ah. King of Swords. For Taurus. And feel free to swap around the characters. This could be you or this could be somebody that you're connected to. Got the Empress. One more time through, please. We got the Lovers. That's air energy coming in. Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. And we got the Ace of Pentacles. <clears throat> so the Empress, the Empress is your person. Searching for truth, I think. Searching for truth from the searching for truth. Give me one more on this. Wanting a new beginning in a relationship. Searching for the truth of what kind of like the Empress is, a, is the manifester. The Empress is like there's a specific person you have in mind. Someone that you, you're thinking of when you think about um, new beginnings, commitment, stability. And we have the Page of Pentacles. So wanting a new beginning, wanting to learn something new in relationship. There's someone specific in your, in your mind frame. And the King of Swords is about maybe knowing, but very detached. Maybe knowing inside, but being very detached from that knowing. Maybe detached from the emotion to it. So let's see. What have we got coming in here so far? We got the High Priestess. That's the moon energy. We have air energy coming in. King of Swords, Lovers, we have the world that's ruled by Saturn. I'll probably look for sure at air energy, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini in the extended. But let's see what this Three of Cups is. This is how you're showing up. Clarify the Three of Cups, please, for Taurus. What is the Three of Cups? We have Nine of Pentacles, we have Death, and we have the Star again. This may be going from a, a lot of people or having a lot of friends or having, like, you know, just celebrating all the time to um, really focusing on yourself because there's death to that and really searching for healing. Stars coming up again. That's twice. Searching for healing because the Nine of Pentacles is, um, is an energy of being alone. Being alone. Um, 
inner reflection, kind of building your own foundation, your own kind of empire, like, you know, starting, starting to make life about your own self-expression, who you are as a person. And the Three of Cups is all about celebrating all the time. There's depth to that. And there's healing and there's really self-focus here. Working on self-confidence, self-esteem, self-acknowledgement. So let's see what this um, Queen of Wands is right in front of you. We got the Five of Swords, Outwit, Outlast, Outplay. It's about competition. Wow, we got the Two of Swords, and we got the Nine of Swords. That's a lot of swords. <laughs> or the Two of, of Wands, I'm sorry. So the Five of Swords is, is the Five of Swords is about competition. Outwin, outwit, outlast, outplay. So what's right in front of you that you need to contend with is this could be a fire sign. I don't know. Could be a fire sign. Uh, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, or it could be about egoic nature. It could be about desires. It could be about passion. It could be about, um, you know, drive, excessive drive. It could be about really fast moving energy, but whatever it is, it's surrounded by competition and strife and having to win and having to compete and having to, um, this is the five of swords is the outwit, outlast, outplay card. Like, trying to outdo somebody else by stepping on their feet. This is tainted success. And you got the two of, tor two of wands. So two of wands is about everything might look good on the outside, but on the inside, it's a disaster. It's a mess. A lot of unhappiness. And you got the nine of swords again. So that is about um, anxiety and fear and... Um, depression and just just feeling like stabbed in the back like just you know it overwhelmed overwhelmed overburdened overtaxed the whole the whole gamut so i'm not putting together the desire for commitment <laughs> with what the outcome is so i'm going to get a couple messages on the outcome but clearly here there's there's an opportunity, there's an opportunity to do some healing. The universe is trying to help you in the heart space, trying to help you overcome whatever these fears are. There's a lot of resistance. However, there's a truth living inside of you. There's a truth living inside of you. It's been sitting there for a long time. So let's see what this high priestess is. This is your hopes and fears. So this is about keeping secrets. The high priestess is a secret keeper. She's a, she is the um, holder of the Kashuk records. She has the knower of Hades, and she's also the knower of the upper realms. But she does not speak. <laughs> she holds all that information. She does not speak unless she's asked. She is the secret keeper. She is the hidden knower. She is the intuitive nature. Got judgment. We got judgment. We've got the seven of wands. One more, please. There's something deep in your psychic that you're holding back from um, releasing. 
Because judgment's about freedom, release, expansion, um, reconsideration. There's something deep within your psyche that you are holding back. You are, like, defending. That has to do with, like, opening and opening and opening up. Yeah, we got the Ten of Swords. And we got the Chariot. So the Ten of Swords is back up again. And that has to do with, you know, what was in your... How you're showing up in the situation. So this has something to do with... Um, we got the Chariot. A driving force. A driving force that this is either like manic depression or this is some kind of like could have to do with mental health it could have to do with um, addictions it could have to do with um, just hopelessness it could have to do with just feeling like your backs against the wall and there's nowhere to go so let's see what this outcome is for you Taurus I may have to get some clarity on that theme because Nothing in that theme is matching up. So, clarity on this Seven of Cups with the... Um, the outcome is that there's a decision that needs to be made that's in front of you that has been sitting there for a long, long time. A choice choices that have been going on now for quite some time. Give clarity, please, on this outcome. So in the extended, I will look at fire signs, uh, Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries, and I will look at um, air signs, Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. I'll find out the intentions with um, those signs. I will look at a little bit more into this outcome. I'm going to look at what this Eight of Cups is all about. Energies that surround you that you're not aware of. I'm going to look at what the Ten of Pen or yeah, Ten of Pentacles is. That's energy that is fading away. And I'll probably go a little bit more into your outcome and find out what this theme is all about. We have the Seven of Swords and we have the Eight of Swords. So the Seven of Swords is about, like, masking. The Seven of Swords is like... I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's sneaky behavior. It's not being upright. And the Eight of Swords is self-sabotage. So whatever the decision is that is not being made that's been going on for quite some time, whatever that is... Um, it comes from fear, guilt, shame, and, you know, trying to hide. Seven of Swords is someone who tries to hide. Hiding things, internally or externally. So, with that, Taurus, I'm going to get some more information on this theme. For those of you not going on, I am going to get a message to you from the universe. From spirit to spirit. And this is from the Denise Lynn Sacred Traveler deck. Messages for Taurus, please. Cards are not, like, cards are kind of staying stuck, too, <laughs> throughout the reading. What? Sometimes they come flying out, and other times it's like, come on. Not two, one. View from above. Get the big picture.
The card meeting. Don't get bogged down in details. Let go of petty concerns. Get the big picture. Imagine that you are seeing your life from above. Only do what is truly important. Everything else is inconsequential. Go through each area of your life to look and see what the big picture is. Make major life decisions based on this strategy. It is easy to forget what the overall journey is about when the traveler gets caught up in day-to-day -day survival and the ups and downs of life on the road. It's only when the traveler takes time to look at the big picture that he realizes that most worries and anxieties are only temporary. Imagine yourself in the future. Ask yourself if what you are doing now will be important to your future self. Focusing on these concerns takes up valuable life force energy. There's your Ten of Swords, exhaustion, taking up energy, valuable life force energy. Focusing on these concerns takes up valuable life force energy. Keep your focus directed on the important things in life and let everything else drop away. So that's what I have for you, Taurus. I hope this helped. Until next time, I wish you peace that passes all understanding. For those of you going on, the link is below and I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.